This is the real shocking truth about Korea, the unspoken truth that everyone saw coming, which might result in no more flashy K-pop, K-dramas, any of that anymore. It's actually the biggest and most urgent problem Korea is facing, and currently there seems to be no way out. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? But speaking of K-pop and K-dramas, while we're at it, if you like Korea and watching Korean content, check out the sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. As you all know, some specific content isn't accessible from some countries and this can range from k-dramas to various korean tv shows featuring your biases but did you know that this problem could be easily solved by using surfshark vpn basically all you need to do is subscribe to surfshark vpn and this will allow you to switch your virtual location to pretty much anywhere else in the world. For example, you'll be able to make full use of your Netflix Viki Aichi account and by unlocking content from around the globe and even virtually place yourself in Korea so that you can watch K-pop related content only accessible to the local market. Imagine missing out on the hottest dramas like The Glory or shows like Boys Planet because it's unavailable in your country. But with Surfshark, simply change your location where they might have English subtitles and enjoy. Not only that, but Surfshark's clean web feature blocks ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts, allowing you to surf the web safely. If you get Surfshark with our code, you can get 83% off plus three extra months for free. There's even a 30 day money back guarantee, so no risk to try it out. You can use one account of Surfshark on an unlimited number of devices. And for further details, check out the link in our description box below. So here we go. According to the National Statistics Office today, the birth rate has dropped to 0.7. That means it's pretty much the lowest in the whole entire world. This means that in 2023, there were only five babies born for every 1,000 people in the South Korean population. The number of annual births in South Korea has gone down by 50% in the last 10 years. Also, the average age of the first time mothers is almost four years older than the OECD average. But that's not it. Not only childbirth, but the number of marriages last year was a mere 192,000, down 1,000 from the previous year, the lowest since 1970. Interestingly enough, apparently the pandemic has also had a significant impact on the decline in birth rates. I would have thought locking up people indoors would do some good, but anyways, experts predict in a pessimistic scenario, the total birth rate could drop to 0 0.61 in 2025. This is Korea's population graph, and it's not looking good. We'll have literally nobody able to work, but so many to feed and take care of. On the side note, that's why I decided to invest my money in India recently, cause look at this. This is what a healthy nation's population graph is supposed to look like. So why is this happening and what could be some solutions? Honestly though, who knows? Cause all the experts and PhDs and government officials who have all the brain, resources, and stats are working their asses off and it seems like the effort hasn't been paying off. The government invested approximately 28 trillion Korean won into countermeasures for low birth rates over the past 16 years, but it just dropped 50%. So as a 30 year old Korean in age for marriage, here is a totally personal point of view, which might represent my generation of Koreans on why we're not getting married and having no kids anymore. First and foremost, money, money, money. money, money. Do I have to explain more? Housing prices are at all time highs. To afford something decent for at least three people in Seoul or maybe even in the Gyeonggi province, the minimum is 600K USD. And that is of 2023 February right now. And the reason I'm saying that is before it was almost double that price. But experts are saying that this is a temporary recession and prices will spring back up. I hope not, but does that matter? Because soon enough, there will be no one left to live in them anyway. So maybe I shouldn't buy a house. So going on, the average annual salary of a Korean in their late 20s to 30s is about 36K USD. That means one would have to save up 16 years without spending a dime on living costs to buy the bare minimum for shelter. Usually people save up to 40% of their income, so it would take more than 30 years. Maybe if you work together, 15 years. With a loan, 10 years. But then there's also the crazy interest rate right now, so who's gonna get a loan? And also knowing life and human beings, it'll probably take longer than 10 years. On top of that, having a baby too? That already sounds like a nightmare. 
At the end, if both mom and dad are working their asses off to afford a house and a living, who takes care of the kid? Parental leave policies in Korea is getting better for sure, but it's still temporary for only the early years of birth and ultimately results in usually the mom quitting her job. I know it's sad, but it's the truth. So going back to money problems, every single friend I know in their 20s or 30s has at least invested in stocks or Bitcoin and has a house lottery bank account and is constantly looking for a side job after work. Working hours. This just shows how hard it is for the 20s to 30s generation in South Korea. Everyone is so desperate in saving and earning an extra buck for their future. The uncertainty in economy, high living costs, inflation, interest rates, and housing prices are driving our generation, my generation, insane. On top of that, you know how competitive Korean society is with education, right? If you don't, go watch K-dramas like Sky Castle or Crash Course in Romance. Parents will literally spend their life savings just to get their kids into good schools and academies, since everyone does it. If you if you don't, then your kid gets left behind. Naturally, I think this is another reason. Number two, Korea is such a competitive society. I've heard so many of my aides say stuff like, if I ever do have a kid, I don't want the child to be raised in Korea. Because we all know what we've gone through. Dead serious, I personally want to raise my kid in the Alps or somewhere in Northern Europe where there are no academies, no hagwons or nothing. Also, not only does this competitive society drive people into not having babies, but it also renovates the mindset into prioritizing everything for yourself. What I mean by this is like, I'm not going to sacrifice my life, my time and energy in, in providing for a partner or a family. And this may seem selfish, but if you think about each individual on how hard they studied and worked to climb up the ladder and get to their position now, you would want the best for your own happiness first. Like spending on traveling, a bigger space for myself, leisure, hobbies, better cars, having a pet, having fun, and meeting new people. After 30 years of working my ass off when I can't even buy a house in 20 years of saving, wouldn't you want to maybe say, oh f let me just live my best life now. Third reason, gender conflict, question mark, social gender stereotypes, and role. Now, I'm not sure on this one entirely. First of all, at least on the internet and media, gender conflict is supposed to be at its peak in Korea. Now, I don't completely believe this because everyone around me seems to be somewhat normal and fine with each other, but I do hear from articles and friends about many cases that represent gender conflicts. It is true that feminism and anybody who speaks the slightest about women's rights is literally considered mentally ill by some people or maybe many people. Also, many women have seemed to lost all hope in men seeing incidents like the Enthroom, Gangnam Station, Shindang Station murders, constant hidden camera crimes. And then there's men firing back on why normal men are being generalized and seen as potential criminals. And then there's also men having the dishwashing theory saying that women have all the fun they have with alpha males during their youth but end up marrying economically rich or stable men. And those men get gaslighted into getting allowance Money from their wives and blah blah blah. It goes on and on. As I said, this whole narrative could be fueled by both incel communities and radical feminist communities. So take however much you want from that, but for sure it does flow outside of those communities to some extent by the media and affect minds. In addition, not only is there blatant hate towards each sex, but also realistically, practically, men and women are trapped in social gender stereotypes or gender roles. In South Korea, while the situation is changing, it is somewhat true to an extent that there is social pressure that the man side is expected to provide the house or a bigger portion of monetary preparation for marriage. And men have been constantly complaining that the society and law is biased, that when society is going for equalism, the remaining mindset is that they have to still ultimately provide more financially. And even when they go through divorce, the law stands by the women's side, men needing to give up more than half of their existing assets and also child custody. But on the other hand, women rebut that nowadays they earn and contribute equally to marriage. And even if they don't, it's because of the glass ceiling. And later on in marriage, if a baby is to be born, which forcibly drives them to discontinue their career, 
they need an insurance plan or a failsafe. And note that prenups are not common in Korea, and culturally, I personally think it would negatively affect even a potential working marriage. To continue, women are also pressured by the traditional conservative Korean society where still the man's family has more power over the woman's, and the wife is expected to do a lot of housework, prepare for traditional holidays, and respect the mother-in-law's words. So on top of all this distrust in each other, add the two aforementioned reasons, money and putting my own well-being first, it becomes a whole headache. Women will be like, no way I'm going to go into a marriage where I don't get respect, I have to go through stress every day with my traditional Korean mother-in-law and ruin my body and career after having a child. And men will be like, no way I'm gonna give up my life savings of 600k to buy a house and get allowance money from my wife and not being able to buy a gaming PC or a drone and do all the housework too because nowadays men have to, ending up just to give up half of all my assets in case of a divorce. Speaking of housing prices though, you would wonder, if it were cheap, wouldn't a marriage be affordable and possible? Some might have asked this question during reason number one, why do you have to live in Seoul? Actually, I think the answer to that question is reason number four. Everything is in Seoul and the other cities are dying. So this might be more of a reasoning to number one and two, and it's like a structural problem of South Korea. Literally everything is in Seoul. All the good education, companies, jobs, entertainment, infrastructure, etc. Every person from any other city has a dream of going to a university in Seoul, getting a job in Seoul, getting an apartment in Seoul. Thus, everyone is always competing for that small pie in Seoul. It's like a dogfight and rat race. I'm from the second biggest city in South Korea called Busan, and it's a wonderful city, but now it is in trouble because there are no young people left. All of them have left for Seoul. And if Busan is like that, let's not even get to the other cities. Because of this, everyone flocks to Seoul and is forced to live near Seoul. That's why there are so-called satellite cities in the Gyeonggi province around Seoul for people who can't afford to live in Seoul but need to or want to commute back and forth. This is why housing prices won't go down and even if you go to other cities, for young people there aren't any jobs left or a working economy at all. So indirectly, I believe that the Seoul-centered structure is pressuring young people to flock to Seoul where everything is crowded, small in space, but expensive, which results in unhappiness and less marriage. So these four reasons were my personal thoughts on why nobody is getting married and having babies, and I guess it's a whole chain effect. They're all connected. In other words, it's a whole shit show. So what would be the solutions? How the fuck would I know? As I said, the government invested $20 billion and it's not working. Despite not having any solutions myself, but to throw some criticism and ideas, I think some of the government programs are directed in the wrong direction. Like rather than focusing on giving out X amount of money for each child born, they should rather be investigating or fixing the deeply rooted societal problems like housing prices, competitive societies, gender conflicts, and more. Like, come on, do you think giving a couple thousand bucks for diapers, powder, milk, and daycare will actually mean anything to people who are struggling to get bread on their table with a non-existent roof. Like, I don't know, if I were the government, I'd rather try giving huge tax benefits to companies like Samsung or Hyundai and then encourage them to build their HQ or factories in other cities. These Korean companies that basically sustain the economy with their supply chain and jobs and subsidiaries are all building factories in Texas right now with tax benefits providing millions of jobs to Americans. Or maybe something else the government could do is move the most prestigious universities to other cities. For example, young aspiring scientists actually go to Daejeon or Pohang to attend KAIST or Posttech, although they come back to Seoul since there are no jobs there. But yeah, it's a known fact that some of this would work because cities like Pohang and Ulsan that have major steel and ship companies have a fair amount of young people there. For example, semiconductor companies in Icheon or Cheongju also maintain the whole city economy. And I also applaud the government's effort in trying to migrate the administrative capital to Sejong city. I don't know, after all, maybe spreading out infrastructure might not be the solution too. And if nothing works at the end, it might be really time to say goodbye to Korea. <laughs> then we might have to go on to the next step. We might need your help. Actually, nowadays, international marriage is an up and rising answer to this problem. A lot of Koreans are actually saying simply accepting and introducing more people from other countries that have a large population could be a solution. So welcome China, India, the US, Brazil, and Philippines. Come on over. 
And in terms of gender conflicts, sadly, Koreans on both male and female sides seem to be welcoming foreigners for the reason that they might assumably be more open-minded than Korean men or women. Also, a lot assume that foreigners are more respectful and diverse in values somehow. As a matter of fact, look at all the international Korean couple YouTube channels popping these days. They have a minimum of 1 million subscribers each. Maybe I should start one too. What am I doing here? Slide into my DMs, okay? I'm all for multiculturalism and multicultural families. That's why I produced the first Korean international dating show, Ramen and Cho. Go watch that if you haven't, by the way. It's high quality, Netflix standard, better than Singles Inferno, some say. So that was it. I guess South Korea is really at the doorstep of being I don't know, maybe this might not be a problem after all, since AI or chat GPT or whatever might take over the world and we're all going to go live in the matrix sooner or later or die of a nuclear war Kim Jong-un is about to start. Jokes aside, I wanted to share our situation in Korea right now after seeing today's depressing article. And I'm genuinely curious on how other countries have a healthy population. For example, India. Do these problems that I've mentioned in the video not exist in your countries? Or if you have a similar situation with South Korea, how is your country coping with it or trying to solve it? Is it having any progress at all? If you have any suggestions or ideas, if you have a magic solution to the population decrease problem in Korea, please leave them down in the comments because Korea is about to disappear and get extinct. Seriously, the Korean ethnicity is about to get extinct in a couple of centuries or uh, maybe a century.